Hi everyone, Squire Twiz here. Uh, another model unboxing. Another Airfix kit, I'm afraid, for those that are wondering why. I just have a lot of Airfix kits in my stash. This one is their 148 Hawker Hunter. It does the F4, F5 and J34 variants. I can't remember last time I made a Hunter kit. It would have been possibly back in the 80s. Uh, I have a little bit of an affinity with Hunters because my old man used to work on them when he first started in the RAF. A couple of the Air Force bases I've lived out of the years had Hunters as gate guards. They're a nice uh, aircraft to look at. I think the silhouette's quite nice. So I want to get this kit. I do want to get other variants of the Hunters. I know there's an F6 available. Uh, there's lots in the 172nd scale. This just happens to be 148. This is a new tooling, I believe. I released a couple of years ago from Airfix. Three variant paint schemes. We'll come to those later. Let's have a look at the first. So it's a nice, fairly basic image on the front. There's a hunter flying over the ocean with a trawler. So we have on the side, so we have Royal Air Force Cyprus, number one squadron. Swedish Air Force number three squadron and the Belgium Air Force number seven wing. So there are your three decal variants and markings you've got available on this one. Cyprus is probably one I'll go for. I know my dad was stationed out in Cyprus at the early start of his uh, IF career for a little bit. Again, blurb about the Hunter. So details of the actual kit when it's assembled is 291 millimeters long, so fairly large, just under a foot in length, 12 inches for anyone in America. 214 mil wide, so again about 10 inches or so, 8 inches wide. 133 pieces, which I think for a 148th scale kit isn't that many. Uh, I have had one or two 148s that had a lot more pieces than that in the 200s. Airfix of this is a skill level four. Yes, the flying point is gone. I can't remember how much flying points this was. I think it was only one, to be honest. Uh, I've always had that for myself. And a very large box for the kit. Let's get it opened. Okay. Let's pick out for the instructions first, because I always like to look at instructions and the paperwork. Before we look at the kit. Okay. So, standard instruction sheet, as usual. Blurb, specs, and the same things that was on the side about the size of the kit. Standard Airfix Affair, so start off with the uh, pilot seat, moving on to the cockpit. This looks like it's got two variants of the seat. One I would imagine is for the pilot to sit on, or one is if you're not having a pilot, so it's got the seat belts and that. A bit more detail. Quite a few steps just to get the cockpit built. Then in onto assembling one half of the fuselage. Getting two halves together. Again, weights. Not quite in the nose, but forwards a bit. So it could end up being tail sit if you're not careful. Some bits to cut out on the wing section. Not sure why. I don't like it when kits do this. If you're meant to cut that out and use it later on, why not make that as a separate part? Why insist on cutting it out? Because if I cut it with a scalpel or with one of my razor saws, I'm not going to get the crisp line. They're not going to go back together well. If it's not supposed to be part of the kit, then don't put it on there. That to me suggests that this was possibly instructions or the mouldings for another vein of the uh, Hunter that do use these. And on this one, they got a separate part instead. So here we go for the undercarriage, whether it's down or up. A few more bits for the wings, tailplane. Again, you can have them up or down, 30 degrees on the flaps and the 
more onto the, on the cage assemblies. I think this one, I might do it on the cage down. Again, there's another bit to remove. So you're gonna cut off. That makes it like you fit C4, but you cut C4. That makes no sense to me. Which is why I believe this is part of another variant, the whole molding, and they've just amended the instructions to fit. There's a choice of two canopies, an open and closed one. And then onto the stencils. So there's not so many stencils on this kit, which is good to know. It comes with separate sheets for the painting. What have we got here? Let's go with how you first. So Operation Musketeer Royal Air Force in Cyprus 1956. This looks nice. That looks a really nice camo paint scheme with the black and yellow stripes going over it. And it even gives you the dimensions on how big those stripes should be for when you're painting it. If you want to paint them instead of using the decals, uh, Airfix have quite ha handily put these sizes on, which is really nice because trying to mask off the uh, stripes is always a bit of a pain. Uh, but sometimes trying to fit the decals is also a pain getting them to line up. This is the one I'll probably go for. However, there's a Swedish variant as well, which is overall green and grey, top half green, bottom half grey. Very simplistic, but again, someone who's good at painting can really do this justice, whether you do some weathering or not. You can really make that shine. And then we've got <coughs> the Belgian one. And yeah, that's actually not a bad paint scheme as well. Hmm. I don't know whether to go for the RAF one or the Belgian one. Because both camouflage paint schemes are exactly the same. I'm not sure that would be the case, but they are according to ethics. However, I think the RAF one with the uh, stripes on it stands out more. And so they are the same, which I'm not sure if that would be the case originally. I've only got some nose art on there that the raft one doesn't. And what's on the other side of this? More stencils, so a lot more now. Hmm, might be a bit harder to do that. Just one side. The decals. Fairly large sheet of decals. Lots of the common ones here. All these small ones. I tend not to put all of them on because I tend to lose them. Uh, and I don't think a lot of people notice, it's only if you're a purist you'll try and get a lot. Big section for the RF ones, mainly because of the stripes and such big decals. Then the Swedish, then the Belgian one. Again, standard thing for Airfix nowadays, they're looking really crisp and clean, really sharp. No fading around the edges. I know some of the older Airfix decals, they were pale, colours weren't quite right. And you can see the transition between the glued sheet and the actual decal itself would trail off as if it was uh, fading away. Yeah. Get the canopy section and the clear bits out of the way first. God, I can never get these out of the bag. There we go. That's nice and crisp, clean. Bit of a blemish on the top part of that canopy there. But open and closed, so yeah, it's a bit of a mark there. Frosted, it looks like a little bit on the wingtip lights. That doesn't look too bad. Two different engine sprues. One with detail for the inside, I assume. They're looking okay. Fuselage, just so you can get an idea of how big this kit is. 
I said it's nice. It's going to be a nice kit to assemble. All the panel line details is recessed. Most manufacturers have moved to that nowadays. Yeah, high detail CAD drawings that you can get. Be good. Uh, there's a slight edge issue with the edging on that tail wing. It's not as crisp. It's a bit rougher there. Looks like maybe rubbing it. It's just taking off something, but it's not straight. There's definitely a curve there. It's not right. But there's not much flashing on this at all. And then the under carriage and cockpit sections. So you can see individual instrument switches. Two ejection seats, so one without, one with all the seat belts. I like that one. Uh, for 148 for kit, there's no pilot included. So Airfix do it on the 170 seconds, but I know one of the few manufacturers I think that still do it on 170 second kits. But 148, I don't know anyone who still does with all their kits. It's not a common thing, you have to buy the pilot separately. Use on. That's a nice kit. Uh, like I said, subject matter to me, Hunter, always a nice plane. Uh, I'd say it's in one of my top 10 of planes. You'll never get away from the Harrier being my number one. I don't care what people say. But the Hunter's close. Top 10, if not top 5. So, really nice kit by Airfix. I can't remember how much I paid for this one. I think it was 30 odd pounds. Uh, from the local model shop. Uh, at some point this will be built. This is one of... It may be my stash, it might be my stash for a while, but it is one I am determined to build at some point. But there we go, another unboxing, and this is Squire Twist saying, happy modelling.